Hello, my name is Burak Antarsi. I'm an associate professor at the University of Ottawa and the founding director of the Next Generation Communications and Computing Networks and Smart Connected Vehicles Innovation Labs at the University of Ottawa. So I'm going to be presenting our work titled uh, Prior Knowledge Input to Improve LSTM Autoencoder-Based Characterization of Vehicular Sensing Data. And this work was in collaboration with uh, Revan Connected, which is an Ottawa-based uh, company. And the first author of this uh, work, uh, Nima Tahiri, um, is my master's student. And this work is also out of uh, his master's thesis, uh, which I'm really proud of. Okay, to start with, why do we need uh, driving event characterization? Well, there are uh, accident prediction systems mainly used for accident prevention, or there might be some uh, driver scoring systems uh, that use these uh, driving event characterization for uh, cases like uh, insurance, for instance. So what we want to do here is we want to detect the, uh, the anomalous patterns and characterize the risky driving behaviors. Okay? And those risky driving behaviors, of course, these are predefined patterns. Right? And mainly, two different types of sources are used here. One of them um, is the, the visual data. So the um, images or, or video collected uh, through the camera can be used, or we can rely on sensors. And here, when we rely on the sensors, well, it can be either in-vehicle sensors or um, IoT sensors we can rely on or the sensors that are embedded in the smart devices, such as smartphones. And there are two main techniques here that are being used. One of them is a threshold-based technique when we rely on sensor data. So if our sensor reading is beyond a certain threshold, then we can say that, okay, that there's an anomaly. So that's the traditional threshold-based approach. There are intelligent, more intelligent approach that rely on um, either clustering or classification based models uh, such as um, support vector machines or some neural network based models. So that is a more intelligent approach here to characterize this type of uh, behavior. Now, the state of the art has certain driving um, event detection uh, systems. And as you can see some examples here, in our previous work, we also um, proposed a similar approach for um, driving events, uh, detection and characterization. So you can also see that in the references of, uh, of this paper as well. Now, um, what we wanna do is we want to bridge the driving event detection systems with the knowledge-based systems that have been used in, in various contexts, as you can see here, such as the, uh, in, in antenna modeling in communications, as well as in uh, the detection of uh, adversarial tasks uh, in a crowd sensing environment. So the knowledge base approach has shown promising performance in those contexts. So what we wanna do is we want to um, bring that here, combine it with the uh, driving event, detect event detection systems. However, there is actually a problem here, which is the rarity and imbalance problem. So the data sets that we work on when we have um, this uh, real-time uh, data collected from the vehicles, these are imbalanced data sets. And further, the events that we are trying to detect are rare events. So we don't have so many um, anomaly events, anomalous patterns in those data sets because they don't happen very frequently. We don't have accident data because um, drivers don't uh, get into accidents uh, frequently. They don't have um, anomaly or risky driving patterns always. So it's really difficult to learn from risky driving patterns or accidents because we don't have many of them in the data set. Now, what we wanna do or what we have here um, is we had to introduce our own solution. But before uh, getting into details of that, I'd like to talk about our setting and how we acquire the data and how we integrate it into our setting so that it'll be easier to, um, to understand and to communicate, of course, for me to um, communicate what we have proposed for, for that, okay? Now, 
First of all, the data was collected through Rayman sensors. Okay. And the records that we rely on here are the actual emitter records. Okay. And we have five driving behavior categories, as you can see here. One of them is the harsh brake uh, category. The other one is the aggressive acceleration and harsh left turn and harsh right turn as well. And the last category is, of course, a normal driving pattern, which is the, the majority, the vast majority class uh, in the data set. Okay. So um, we have actually more than 500 event signals here in the data set that was be collected through the Raven sensors. What we did for this data set is we split this data by 70 to 30%. So 70% is for training and 30% is for testing. Now, um, then what is this here? That times 10? Well, this is actually what we wanted to do to cope with the problem that I described in the previous slide. Let me go back there. So we have this problem, right? Data scarcity problem. So there are two possibilities here. You either rely on some simulations or you generate synthetic data based on what you see here. That's what we wanted to do. So we wanted to generate synthetic data, okay? By using our uh, training data. And this is where it comes from, okay? So that 10 times is to um, multiply our incoming data uh, patterns and add some um, Gaussian noise to the input signals and then uh, obtain uh, a representation of the um, input signals, various representation of the, or multiple representations of the uh, input signals. That's what we wanted, wanted to do. Another thing here is, of course, um, these uh, signals were recorded uh, at a frequency of 25 hertz and the uh, event signals here, they vary from two seconds to 3.6 seconds. And of course, they, they overlap in time, as you can see here. Um, 0.6 seconds is actually uh, the overlapping time, um, which is also visible here in this figure. Okay. Now, what we uh, want to do here is, I'll talk about the details of how we um, generate the synthetic training data. But before that, I want to cover the big picture okay, for the system model. Now, this is the big picture for the system model. All right, we get the actual measure readings from the Raven sensor. Here's our sensed signal that goes into our classifier. You can use any classifier here. Why we chose the classifier that I'm gonna be talking about in the next uh, few seconds is, well, we have already um, implemented and tested it in a previous study. So we know that it gave us uh, promising results. Now, the classifier produces some prediction. Is it 100% accurate? No, of course. So what we want to do is we want to boost that prediction. And how can we boost it? Well, if we have some prior knowledge on this data, that can help us boost our performance. And this actually brings the prior knowledge. So the actual signal knowledge, uh, signal label, if we have information about that, uh, we'll be able to feed it into our prior knowledge input model here, okay? So the output of our classifier, the prediction output of our classifier, and the prior knowledge generated by the signal label. So these are the inputs to the prior knowledge input model. And this makes the final prediction here. And what do we use here in the prior knowledge input model? Well, you can use um, any model, but of course neural networks are um, the most uh, common and the desired ones um, inside this one, okay? Now, Let's get into further details here. There are two aspects, as I said at the beginning. The first one is, or two questions. The first question is, how do we synthesize the data? Okay. How do we generate synthetic data? Because we don't have many of those uh, anomaly patterns. The second one is, of course, the second question is, how do we classify this? Now, I'm not talking about the PKI yet, but I'll talk about it in a few minutes. So for generating synthetic data, well, we feed the features here from the raw signal and we add Gaussian noise. Of course, we um, replicate them 10 times as you can, as you saw, we multiple, multiplicate um, them and we add Gaussian noise to every, um, every signal reading. And this goes into an encoder 
uh, maps on to uh, um, lower dimension uh, vector representation, which becomes the input of our uh, classification network here, right? And what is the functionality of the decoder? Well, the decoder here is, is used uh, for denoising and reconstruction of the raw signal at the beginning, as you're going to see now here, okay? So we go with a recurrent uh, autoencoder network, okay, to generate uh, synthetic data because we don't have many of the anomalous events. And for the event classification, as you can see here, well, we go with a convolutional um, LSTM uh, model, okay? And for convolutional LSTM model, what we use is, okay, we go with um, a softmax function function for the uh, for the loss actually what we're using as a loss function as we use uh, the uh, softmax function and cross entropy as you can see here okay now continuing on to the prior knowledge input because i haven't talked about the details of that yet okay we have the incoming driving signals here to our train classification network so we have the entire features that are coming here and this makes a prediction that goes into our PKI model. And of course, the prior knowledge at the beginning, okay, which is coming from the actual label. So that goes into the PKI model as an additional input. And our PKI model makes a prediction. And in a, in a training stage, what we do is we compare this with the target output, okay? And this result is fed back into the PKM model, okay? So this is actually in the, during the training process, okay? So we compare what we what PKI has produced and we send the update or feed the update back into the PKI uh, to train it so to make better decisions, okay? In the testing process, of course, we don't have that correction step. So the output of the uh, classifier is fed into the trained PKI model so as the actual um, label or the prior knowledge coming from the actual label and, the, and we let the PKI make a prediction. And as I said before, you can use any model here uh, to form your PKI model. Uh, neural network based approaches are the most common ones to use. And here we have uh, two hidden layers with a hyperbolic uh, tangent activation function that's being used. And, um, you can actually see uh, all those structural details about the PKI model, what's being used uh, here to boost the accuracy of our um, Conval STM uh, classifier. Okay. Now let us see the numerical results. So we have different classifiers. So we have a multi-layer perceptron and also we have an autoencoder plus multi-layer perceptron solution. We have uh, convolutional LSTM and we have autoencoder and convolutional LSTM. Now, what happens if we have uh, prior knowledge inputs integrated with these models and if we don't have prior knowledge inputs integrated with these models? What we can see here in this result is, well, no matter what, integrating prior knowledge with any of these classifiers can increase the accuracy and the level of improvement in the accuracy varies from about 2% to 5%, more than 5%, as you can see. So we can improve it significantly, okay? And how does this translate into our uh, false predictions or more general, let's talk about uh, formally about the performance metrics. Let's talk about the F1 scores. So this is the F1 score um, improvement, as you can see. So when we don't have the PKI model and when we do have the PKI model, Okay, so significant improvements, all right, in terms of uh, the, uh, the F1 scores. Okay, so we can go up to 90% F1 score. And the improvement in F1 score comes from the lower false positive cases. The plus and minuses you can see here, these are actually um, the errors within a 95% uh, confidence uh, level. Okay, because we ran this experiments 10 times. Okay, so to conclude, if we include the prior knowledge input model, we can 
reduce our model's uh, complexity and we can come up with better uh, prediction results, better accuracies, improved accuracies, as well as improved um, F1 scores, which is a function of precision and, and recall. And we can uh, have uh, lower false predictions. Okay. And of course, that can improve the vehicular uh, safety systems. Now, is that it? No, there are some ongoing issues, ongoing work and open issues. So there are several other knowledge-based methodologies, which we are currently um, working on and integrating them into this model. And of course, there are other data sets that are being used. And it's, it's a good idea to also uh, test these under other data sets and to see how this generalizes to other data sets as well. So this concludes my talk. Thank you very much. Do not hesitate to reach us if you have uh, any questions. Thank you.